As for the story I promised you, you can find it in the book Al Amali for Shaykh Al Tusi Rahmatullah Ali, and we'll conclude with it, inshaAllah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The, the story is narrated by Imam Al Sadiq. Salam. Imam Al Sadiq is narrated to have said that the Prophet وآله, one day was present when a young man was on the brink of dying. Please listen carefully. It's a touching story. The Prophet was present. As a young man was in his last moments, the moments in which the soul departs from the body. So the Prophet told him, say, La ilaha illallah, there is no God other than Allah. So the young man wanted to say it, but wasn't able to. He tried multiple times to say that word, but wasn't able to. The Imam says there was a lady beside his head. So the Prophet addressed that lady. And told her, does this man have a mom? As in, is his mom alive? Is she alive? Is she present? She told him, yes. I am his mom. I am his mom. The Prophet said, are you displeased with him? She said, yes. I haven't spoken to him ever since six years. It's been six years that I haven't spoken to my son. Here you might ask, what did this young man do to his mom for her to refrain from speaking to him for six whole years? He must have done something very awful. So she, so the Prophet told her, be pleased with him. And she said, anhu ya Rasulallah bi She said, may Allah be pleased with him, O Messenger of Allah. Since you are pleased with him. It's as if she's telling him, Ya Rasulullah, from now on I'm going to be pleased with him because of you. Because you told me, be pleased with him. So here the Prophet addressed a young man. And he said, say, La ilaha illallah. So here the young man was able to say it. The Prophet told him, what are you seeing? The man said. He said, I'm going to translate, of course, to give you a literal translation of the hadith over here, and in a bit we will comment on this translation. The young man said, I am seeing a black man who looks ugly and has filthy clothing and has a disturbing smell. That individual right now is responsible of me, as in he's beside him and he's frightening him, instilling pain in that young man's heart and he is choking me he tells the prophet so the prophet said say the following please memorize this dua he said say ya man yaqbalu al-yaseer o he who accepts the good deeds even if they're small wa ya'fu 'an al and forgives the bad deeds even if they're abundant iqbal minni al-yaseer accept the small, minor good deeds I've done, the little good deeds I've done, wa'fu anni al-kathir, and forgive the many bad deeds I've done, innaka anta al rahim surely you are the all-forgiving and the all-merciful. Here the young man said it. So the Prophet told him, look and tell me, what do you see? He said, right now I see a white man, I see a white man who has a beautiful face, a nice face, whose fragrance is beautiful, his scent is beautiful. He's wearing nice clothing, and that individual has come forth to take care of me. I still see the black man, but he has turned away from me. The Prophet told him, repeat the supplication. He repeated it. And then he told him, what are you seeing? He told him, right now, I can't see the black man, but I can see the white one. He is, he is present and he is taking care of me. Then the young man passed away. Here we have two comments. Two comments. The first one is Sheikh Abbas Al-Qummi's comment, Rahmatullah Alayhi. He says, look at this young man. The master of creation, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, was beside him. 
And he told him, Say la ilaha illallah. Yet the young man wasn't able to say it until his mom became pleased with him. This tells you a lot about what? The importance of treating your parents well and the danger of mistreating your parents. The second comment we want to say is here when we read that there was a black man who was present, who had an ugly appearance, who was wearing filthy clothing, etc. And then there was a white man who was wearing nice clothing and who had a beautiful, a beautiful scent. When we read this tradition, a question might come to mind, and that is, does this hadith and other ahadith similar to it indicate that white people are better than black people? We say obviously not. It does not indicate that whatsoever. Your value as a human being lies in what? In your beliefs, practices, and morals. Hence, sometimes a white man might be better than a black man and vice versa. A black man might be better than a white man in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The issue does not lie in your skin color. Your value does not lie in your skin color or race or ethnicity or background. Rather, it lies in what? In your beliefs, practices, and morals. That's the first comment. The second comment regarding this, uh, these two parts of the hadith is, when the hadith says, that there was a black man and then there was a white man. Bear in mind, the hadith is telling us that the young man was seeing a manifestation of his deeds. The manifestation of the bad deeds of that individual or some of, some of his bad deeds was that individual who had a disturbing physical appearance, who had a disturbing scent, etc. And the manifestation of his good deeds or the manifestation of some of his good deeds was that individual who had a good appearance and a good scent, etc. Now, when the hadith says that he saw a black man, Rajulan Aswad, possibly what is meant by the word Aswad is that that manifestation of his sins, that manifestation of his sins had a disturbing physical appearance, a frightening physical appearance from which darkness stemmed. From which darkness stemmed. So the word aswad might not refer to the actual color of the, uh, of the, the individual he saw. Rather, it might mean that he saw an individual from which darkness stemmed, meaning an individual whose presence causes fear, whose presence disturbs an individual. An individual from which you see no physical or spiritual light stemming. On the other hand, the word abyad, when it says he saw a white man, the word abyad, white, might refer to the fact that that manifestation of his deed was a beautiful manifestation. It had a beautiful appearance from which physical or spiritual light stemmed, such that when a person sees it, he feels comfortable. He feels at peace. Bear in mind, bear in mind. I'm saying this word in order to clarify what I just said. Bear in mind that sometimes you see a black individual, a person who's uh, dark-skinned, and you realize that, subhanAllah, there's some sort of spiritual light stemming from his face. When you see him, you feel comforted. You feel at ease. And sometimes you see a white individual who's evil, who's wicked, such that when you see him, you feel that there is no light stemming from him, that there is actual negative energy, darkness stemming from that individual. So the hadith, when it says abyad and aswad, might be pointing to that issue, not to the actual 
physical color of the, uh, the, the two forms that young man saw. In short, in short, we'd like to say that there is no racism in Islam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam placed racism under his two blessed feet and ripped it apart. I believe all of you know that in the eyes of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, an Arab was not better than a non-Arab. And a non-Arab was not better than an Arab unless he had more piety. The Prophet would look at the person's soul, at the person's piety, not at the person's skin color. And I believe all of you know that the Mu'addin of Rasulullah, the one companion who was appointed by the Prophet in order to call for prayer, was none other than Bilal al-Habashi, a black man called Bilal who was from Abyssinia. May Allah bless his soul. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu ala al-Mustafa Muhammadin wa alihi al-Tahirin. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad wa ajjil farajahum.